right, we are live. Um, yeah, hey guys. So we are here today with Sean Swentek. Is that how I say it? Swentek. You know it. <laughs> with a uh, walk on water. Um, I know everyone, you know, our followers have heard of a walk on water a lot over the past couple of years. Um, so Sean's here today to tell you more about it. And um, also we have our charity competition um, coming up on June 23rd where um, all proceeds are going to them. So Sean, why don't you just tell us first what a walk on water is? Uh, sure, but let me start by saying thank you, Angela, because you and Stephen from Slide have been longtime supporters of A Walk on Water, and we're just we really appreciate that. Um, you guys have been amazing. You've been such good friends to us, and, and we really do love you guys for that. So thank you. I don't know if I should be looking in your eyes or the camera when I do this. So this is my first time. Right there is perfect. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so yeah, about A Walk on Water, uh, we were founded in 2012, so we're now a little over six years old, and um, it's been just a crazy wild ride. I think, you know, it's a lot of similarities to what you've probably gone through with slides. So, you know, well, um, any business, whether it's a nonprofit or for-profit business, um, there's so much that happens in those first few years. So it's been super exciting to watch us grow and, and evolve and change over the years, um, all while trying to stay true to our original mission, which is, you know, to bring surf therapy, uh, children with special needs, and their siblings and their families. So that's really uh, what our core tenet is. We're all about giving back to families of children with special needs, providing a day of relief, not just for the child with special needs, but really involving the entire family in the event uh, so that it's something that they can all um, come together uh, in sort of a shared success as their child accomplishes something really difficult and that not a lot of kids do, which is surfing. Yeah, it's incredible to see and to be at one of your events. Um, and I forgot to mention, you're the executive director. So <laughs> um, have you been with A Walk on Water since the very beginning? Since yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks. I'm yeah. not all about titles, but thank you for that. Um, yeah, I'm one of the co-founders. So been there since the beginning. Um, I was served on the board of directors as a volunteer for the first five years. And then in December, I moved off the board and I was actually the first uh, true employee hired uh, by the organization to help uh, move things forward in a positive way. Um, you know, I, I think maybe some people don't realize that nonprofits, uh, especially as they grow, actually do have you know employees uh, that are help run the day to day. It's just after you get to a certain size, it's just impossible to be a completely volunteer run organization. So. Uh, it's a lot of new pressures, and I, obviously I want to make sure that I'm doing right by the organization that is, that's so close to my heart. You know, this is really my life. It has been for the last six years, uh, to the maybe detriment of my marriage. My poor wife is probably sometimes like, can you please stop working on AOL? You've been doing it for 16 hours straight today. Um, but, you know, you really want to do right by all the people who support you, all the donors, all the volunteers who give back their time, you know, just constantly. We We've grown a ton over the last year, Angela. We uh, we only had six events last year, which is still pretty significant. And if you've ever been to an AOL event like you have, they're, they're pretty massive <clears throat> undertakings. So we actually went from six events last year to, to putting on 11 events this year is what we have scheduled. So it's a huge growth year for us. There's a lot on the table, but we're super excited to be able to reach so many additional families this year with these, with these uh, number of events that we're having all across the U.S. So when were you able to go full time in this? And uh, so I moved off the board of directors and into this role in December uh, at the end of last year. And so it's been uh, a little over five months that I've been doing this now. And, it's... and you're the one sole employee or? Is it a... No, you know, we actually just a couple months ago hired a second individual to produce all the events that we have, including our fundraisers, uh, a young man named Desi, who is actually down by you guys in Oceanside. And he is been an amazing uh, addition to the team uh, someone with a lot of experience in the surf industry put on events for the what used to be uh, the world surf tour uh, and just a great guy so we're really making big steps we're growing a lot we're changing a lot but we're, like I said we're really trying to stay true to you know what our roots are which is taking kids with special needs and their and their siblings out for an amazing day of surf at the beach yeah so you've gone from now California you have events in I saw in Texas you guys just mm -hmm. And then you're going to New Jersey. So um, how did the like, how do you handle that expansion? 
Um, <laughs> good question. How do we handle it? Uh, with a lot of elbow grease and hard work. And like I said, we have seriously the most amazing volunteer base and the hardest working board of directors. Yeah. Uh, all these people just put in yeoman's work to help me out, uh, me and Desi, to make these events happen. Um, yeah, we, we did just go to Austin, Texas, of all places, the heart of Texas. Uh, there's a new wave park that was built there a couple of years ago by Doug Coors called Enland Surf Park. Uh, just an amazing opportunity to bring surf therapy to people who probably never would have even thought their kid would surf. You know, they're in what's essentially a landlocked area of Texas. Um, and so it was a really special experience. It reminded me a lot of when I first started in surf therapy many years ago when it was still a pretty new thing. And all the families, you know, were new and they were experiencing it back then. And it was it's it's really a powerful thing. And so Texas was sort of this rejuvenating thing where these kids were coming out of the water with huge smiles on their faces. The parents and all the families that were there were just crying, bawling like I'm getting chills right now because it's, <laughs> they were just sitting there going, I, I never thought my kid would do this. And I know like maybe some people who haven't seen this uh, in person or haven't experienced surf therapy might be like, yeah, you're just taking kids surfing, big deal. And yeah, that is what we do, but there's something really magical and healing and therapeutic about surfing. Um, I, you ask anyone who participates in, in ocean sports, whether it be handboarding, body surfing, surfing, you feel better when you get out of the water, right? Like it cleanses you, it, it changes your mood. Uh, you know, there's a lot of science going into this, whether it's the ions that are breaking, you know, when, uh, when the wave crashes or whether it's the motion of the water with the rhythmic nature of that, there's so much that goes into it and we don't fully understand honestly why there's such a benefit but we just know that there is this massive benefit that we can see and that we hear from the families and the testimonials that they give us after the event. Yeah, you see it immediately when the kids get out of the water. I mean, they're so happy. It's like, and the families. I mean, it's a great day, not just for the kids, but for the parents. And this Agreed, yeah. We, we think that's a really important aspect that we, we try not to underplay because um, a lot of times families will often have a child with special needs and a child that's quote unquote normal or neurotypical. Um, and those kids often have divergent lives and participate in two very different life paths. And a lot of times that can divide a family a little bit. So we're really focused on providing an event where it's inclusive to the entire family unit. We almost always take the sibling surfing alongside the, ch the other child if the, that child wants to go. And we've even taken the parents out surfing with their kid because they really want to understand why this experience is so powerful for their child. Right. So how did you first get into the walk on water? Uh, the easiest way is to go to our website, awalkonwater.org. You can sign up to volunteer. If you uh, have a child with special needs or know someone who does, there's an athlete sign up form there where they can sign up their child to participate. Uh, you can donate there through the website. Uh, you can learn about our upcoming events, et cetera. Um, and I, I should talk about something I just mentioned there. Uh, some people get confused. So the, the kids with special needs and their siblings who participate with us are referred to as athletes. Um, it's a word that's really important to us because it's non-discriminatory. It's non-labeling. We don't ever talk about the kids as being different than anyone else. Um, when you're at our event and you're surfing, you're an athlete. We're all athletes out there in the water together. And it's a really important distinction for us that these kids for one day aren't labeled as anything other than being a surfer and an athlete. Right. And they get awards, right? After at the end of the day. And that's an incredible experience for to see as well. Yeah, you know, it's speaking to that, a lot of these kids um, don't have these opportunities all the time in sports uh, to excel or to have even an opportunity to participate. And so we do have these beautiful handcrafted wooden trophies that our buddy Dave in Huntington Beach makes that are just gorgeous. And we do a whole trophy ceremony at the end of the surf session and we call up each child by name. They come in this big group with all the surf instructors and water safety personnel and all the volunteers. And they sit there in front of all of them and smile and get their picture taken with their trophy. And everyone's cheering and celebrating. And it's really beautiful to witness a lot of these kids. Um, I mean, I think if you look out at the people watching and cheering, they're all crying because you can see in the child's face what it means to them. To, yeah. I'm like tearing up. About it. <laughs> no, I'm a little bit too just talking about it. <laughs> um, so then what is a typical day for a beach event uh, for a walk on water? Like walk us through how does it start? You know, what is everything? What what should I expect if I want to come and volunteer? What does the day look like? 
there, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it for sure. And like I mentioned, I'm so thankful for all our volunteers who help make these events even possible. There's so much that, that's in How there. How many but, volunteers do you have? Uh, I mean, at, at any one event, there's around 125, but we have an on, uh, ongoing list of probably over 500 volunteers who participate yeah. yearly. So it's yeah. really amazing, um, all these people who take part. Yeah, an event just so you know, is always 100% of the time, always has been, always will be completely free to attend for the families and volunteers, um, thanks to our amazing sponsors like Paul Mitchell. And they get there, they're greeted in the parking lot. We help carry their stuff up to the beach. We help set them up. We get them checked in. We provide like a gourmet healthy breakfast. We have a coffee station with really good gourmet coffee. Um, we really want them to have this like almost like spa retreat, like experiential thing uh, when they're at our events. So. From there, um, we get them in a wetsuit. We have these people who are trained and specialized in getting these kids who are sometimes a little fidgety and not wanting to necessarily get into an uncomfortable wetsuit yeah. into their wetsuit. <laughs> I don't into like a vest. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what that's like, right, Angela? Um, <laughs> and then we pair them up with one of our uh, specially trained surf instructors, what we call surf therapists. Uh, and that surf instructor will, will often sit there on the beach with the child before paddling out, get to know them, play in the sand with them, really create a rapport that the child feels comfortable enough to go paddle out with them into what's kind of scary for these small kids. Even a little three, four foot wave, when you're here only three feet tall, that can be really scary for these kids. So it's about getting them to a comfort level where they're willing and able to do this on their own without feeling like we're forcing them to go surf. The instructor paddles out with them, sits outside the wave for a little bit, splashes water, gets them comfortable with the feeling of the ocean. And then they catch waves for sometimes 20, 30, 40 minutes, an hour. I've seen kids catch 20 waves. It's epic. <laughs> they come in. Everyone's stoked. The kid's always smiling and happy. I'll tell you, the ones who fight the most about going out and seem like they don't want to do it are the ones who come back with the biggest smile on their face. Um, we do the trophy ceremony, like I mentioned earlier. Then we all break for lunch. We all eat a big, healthy, gourmet lunch. Um, and we do it together. The families and the volunteers and everyone sit together, talk and really interact. Our events are so familial and so family-based and oriented. That, that's a really important aspect. Mm -hmm. And we go out for the afternoon, do the whole thing over again uh, with a new set of families. And then we all do a beach cleanup at the end of the day, put everything away and uh, we're off the beach for the day. So it's a full day. You know, We really like families to come out at 8 a.m., stay till four, really feel like they get a full day of you know, just relief from their day-to-day -day job of raising their child with special needs, which any parent with a child with special needs will tell you is a 24-7, 365 thing. Right. And that's a lot that goes into the day. Um, so, and you need, you can be volunteer. You don't need to volunteer just as a surf instructor or... Um, yeah, no, not at all. Like I said, we have around 125 volunteers, about 20 of which are surf instructors. So we still have over 100 other jobs that are, you don't have to be an expert surfer to participate. You know, we have people who are lifeguards and who are trained in CPR, who are on the safety teams. So that's a really important aspect of what we do. We have a full support team on the beach and in the water that are supporting our surfers to make sure these kids are really safe when they're surfing. Then we have a ton of volunteer positions on the beach, people in registration, people working in the wetsuit tent, um, people helping the families get set up on the beach, people uh, working the merchandise booth, all these different things that we have offering. Um, and I should mention, you know, outside of just the surfing, our events offer all these other experiences for the kids. We have art stations where kids can draw on an actual canvas, take it home, put it on the wall. We have uh, mm -hmm. yoga instructors that come and take the kids through basic yoga techniques. Um, we have like, you know, kids playing around with soccer balls and footballs and just generally playing on the beach and having a good time. And then we always have um, a live music component. We have musicians come down. They bring extra instruments for the kids to play with. And we, you get these huge like sing-along sessions going that are so epic. These kids love music, and so they respond really well to that. And um, can I can people come just to check it out before they come to volunteer? And no, absolutely. Spectators are highly encouraged. <clears throat> One of the things we love to have is a big group of people down on the shoreline cheering on the kids and celebrating them as they catch their first wave or as they come in from the water. So we highly encourage someone who's unsure about the event or maybe didn't sign up and just wants to see it you're welcome to come on down and just cheer the kids on. We'll actually be uh, at the beach this Saturday for one of our events in Malibu at Surfrider Beach at First Point. Um, so if you're, if you're in the area of LA and you want to come see, see it in action, come down Saturday and check it out for sure. So what is your favorite story or I don't want to call it success story, but maybe review or, you know, something special that happened that you can remember, you know, really um, no, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, there's so many, like I said, I mean, we, 
our goal is to actually reach a uh, thousand kids this year with surf therapy and we've, and we've taken over 2000 in our in our five years surfing so there's so many great stories i think one that we always go back to that we love to tell is the story of jacob who's been surfing with us since day one um jacob has autism pretty severe um and he was nonverbal when he started surfing with us i believe he was four years old and he had never spoken in his life at four years old um I remember putting on his wetsuit back when that was my job at the events and it was a struggle. He was literally like punching me in the face, pulling on my hair, pulling on my very long beard um, and generally being very grumpy about this experience. But his parents had heard good things. They really wanted him to try and do it. So we were we were spending a lot of time. I think it probably took two and a half, three hours before we could even get him near the surfboard. Got him with one of our best instructors, Stephen. Stephen, you know, had to like really calm him down paddle him out and he sat outside the, the, the break and just sat with him for a good hour before they did anything just trying to get him to relax they eventually caught a couple of waves they came in i saw him when they came in steven looked exhausted because this kid was a swimmer um but he just you know he looked relieved and jacob looked very calm way different than when he went out and you know i walked over with the parents who were kind of watching with me intently the whole time and he started talking to steven Stephen's like that was uh, you know a lot that was heavy he said, but after a few waves, he really calmed down. And, and he's like, after the second or third wave, he, I felt him relax and he started talking to me. And he said, you know, ocean and water and, and, wave, and words like that. And his parents are like, what are you talking about? Jacob can't speak. Um, I'm getting emotional, sorry. Um, and Stephen's like, no, we were talking out in the water. Uh, and, and everyone just kind of broke down crying like I'm doing right now. Um, and, uh, and Jacob surfed uh, at almost every event with us since in these last six years. And uh, if you saw Jacob at the beach, he would walk right up to you, say hello, and have a full conversation with you. He's a fully well-adjusted young man who's excelling in school, excelling in life. Um, and it's really beautiful to see. And I'm not saying that surf therapy is the sole reason for that, but I really believe that it played a big part in helping him uh, become the, the kid and eventually the man that he's going to be. So. That's incredible. Thank you for sharing that. Story. No, no, I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we don't have too much more time, but um, I know you just left your old job to do this. So like, what mm -hmm. would you be doing without a walk on water? Or do you think you'd be doing another? You know, <laughs> uh, pro I'd probably be like better supporting my poor wife who uh, <laughs> works so hard she's a doctor and she's oh, seven months pregnant with our first baby and so i hope i'm providing enough support for her i, I really hope i'm a little excited uh, and nervous about our first kid coming but i would definitely still be doing nonprofit work um i've been in the working with children with special needs in various nonprofits for uh, mm -hmm. almost 20 years now i started in 1999 with special olympics uh, i always did it on the side as i worked in my marketing career um, but I always knew that there was something that really drew me to that work. So I, if I wasn't working full time now for Walk on Water, I'm pretty sure at this point in my life, I'd be working uh, for some other nonprofit. It just it's what's most important to me. It's what I believe in. And it's what I want to do for the rest of my life. It's, it's really fight for those uh, who need a, you know, a little helping hand. Takes a very special person to do what you do. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. I have great support at home. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Um, I just wanted to finish off with um, a quote I found from a parent that I thought was like kind of encompassed what a walk on water is. So I'm just going to read it for everyone. Um, and this parent said, surfing provides so many benefits for our kids. It brings a sense of calm and happiness. It also builds their confidence and independence. Surfing benefits their uh, surfing benefits their body as well as their soul. Every member of AWOW guides them in this process. The kids feel when they catch a wave is intrinsic and does not require any validation from the outside. But of course, everyone there on the beach will be their best cheerleaders and fans. We can see how relaxing, how exhilarating, and how transfer transforming this experience can be for our twin boys. Every AWOW staff plays an integral role from the administrative role to the volunteers on the beach and the surf instructors in the water. It is a well-run program comprised of efficient members. 
AWOW is indeed surf therapy and AWOW truly heals. So, that, yeah, no, I thought that was a really good. Um, oh, I'm going to cry again. I think I know who that's from, too. And she's like the most amazing mom with the most amazing twin boys. Um, cool. yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah. That's Love amazing. We, yeah. should, I, we should talk about your upcoming event before we end this, right? I mean. Yeah, so next month we have June 23rd. This will be our second um, handboard competition. Last year we had it um, in St. Clemente and we benefited a walk on water and we raised, I think just under a thousand dollars with our raffle and yeah. uh, prizes. So this year we're trying to beat that. Um, we already, um, we're, we're doing a things a little different. So mm -hmm. um, we're doing an expression session. So for people that are um, scared to compete or just want to be out in the water. So and we're south of the pier. So for this mm -hmm. event, we take over the south of the pier. So if you just want to hang out in the water, come down. It's ten dollars to do the expression session. And that ten dollars goes direct to a walk on water. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a Thank lot you. of cool raffle prizes that we've yep. been collecting from awesome companies um, that we're going to be doing. And Michelle um, can can post on uh, what the prizes are and the donations. Yeah. And then um, all the proceeds from the competition go to a walk on water, too. So I think we've paid for now the permit. So now anyone else that signs up all direct goes to a walk on water. So well, that's that. amazing. We're, we thank you so much for that, Angela. And just to be clear to everyone who may not live where you do in like the best city in Orange County, she's talking about the San Clemente here. So south of that on June 23rd. And yeah, you do have some amazing supporters. I know one of your biggest for this event is also a contributor to walk on water, which is the fin uh, who make like the best fins in the world. So um, super stoked that they're involved again in this. They support yeah. us for a long time. The fin will be there as well. They're flying out. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a fun event, and we hope everyone can come. And also, um, if you can't come, you can donate directly on a Walk on Water website. Um, and um, I don't know. Do you have oh, any apparel up on you. the website? You're I'm wearing my, uh, my Walk on Water shirt. I love um, it. I love that box. shirt. <laughs> That's the one my wife wears all the time. Yeah, I love this shirt. So is the apparel up on your site to buy? Not yet. We're about to launch our brand new website so soon. It's been so long in the making. It's driving <laughs> me nuts. But we're so close. And we're going to have the shop up on there uh, with all the merchandise that's made by Kate and who are just amazing for us making all these great clothes that people love to wear. Um, so that'll be up soon. But if you come to the event Saturday in Malibu, you can buy our merchandise. And I'm sure we'll have some available at your event on the 23rd of June in San cool. Clemente. Um, but yeah, the, hopefully the website is coming soon. Okay. Awesome. Uh, well, and hopefully on the 23rd, you'll get to meet my new baby girl. If I yeah, can. Do you have that. some names picked out yet? We have the name picked out. So my wife, like I said, is a doctor. And so this is, we're having a girl and we wanted something that inspired that strength. Like my wife has. So the Egyptian God of wisdom is Sia, like the singer. Oh, S -I -A. Like and so it. her name is Sia and my wife is Hispanic. Her favorite artist is Frida Kahlo so the middle name is Kahlo so see you oh, Kahlo soundtrack. I love it I That's love it too I'm funny. excited well our daughter was supposed to be Harper and we uh -huh. changed it to Venice right before she was born so you might change it just beware but you probably <laughs> you might change it back I like I love the name Venice so I really like locational names like that I think yeah, it's cute Kahlo. yeah I can't um, wait to see what your next one is going to be it's um, going to be like Lancaster or something. <laughs> <laughs> Not happening for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> don't scare me like that. We're still in the excited stage. Don't, yeah, don't make us be so nervous yet. You're going to love it. Yeah, and yeah. I hope you get to meet her when, uh, hopefully soon, a couple yeah. more weeks. Oh, yeah. I know. We're so <laughs> super excited. Well, thank you, Angela, so much for having awesome. me on. I really appreciate yeah. the support you guys provide us. You and Stephen are, and Harper are amazing. We love what you do. I'm Venice. <laughs> Call her Harper. <laughs> it's all right. All right. Well, have a good one and we'll chat soon. Thank Bye. you, Angela. Bye.